So, welcome in a new video series where I'm going to hopefully teach you how to uh, program a programmable ECU such as a Speeduino, a Mega Squirt, or something else that is Tuner Studio based. Because I'm going to do a guide on how to use Tuner Studio with any programmable ECU that is well, using that software. First of all, obviously I'm not going to be responsible for any damage that you do to your engine because that is done quite easily with programming an ECU. So keep that in mind. Also, if you don't want to do this yourself, I also offer tuning services. You can hit me up on Instagram for that, for example, and then I will either help you tune your car or I can also help you with guidance for your own build, be it an MX-5 or something else. I'm pretty confident in saying that I have a lot of experience in turbo conversions and generally tuning and yeah, stuff like this. In this first part, we are going to start with the basic settings. So creating a tune and calibrating the sensors so that they can be used properly in Tuner Studio. All right, so starting with the first part of our ECU guide, um, we are going to show you how to tune an ECU in Tuner Studio. So that includes Mega Squirt ECUs, Speeduino ECUs, uh, KData ECUs, and maybe some others I just didn't mention right now, but uh, as I said, this basically applies for anything in Tuner Studio. First thing we're gonna do is we are going to open a new project, then we set our name. I don't really care what the name is, so doesn't really matter now for this project anyway. I have plugged in my Speeduino ECU to an USB port on my PC right now, and I'm gonna click uh, detect on firmware, and hopefully it is going to show up. If it is not going to show up, or if it's not showing up, then you might have to install the USB drivers for your device or for your ECU. You find them on the either like support website um, or where you bought the ECU. There might be some download sections where you can get those drivers. Ours has been found. We're just gonna click accept. Um, if there's another, for example, a download warning, just click yes, then it's going to download the configuration so that it can read the ECU and uh, uh, tell the software where each thing is that you're going to use. Um, everything else is pr pretty much not really necessary. Obviously you can give the project a description if you, for example, do some, some car and you want to know what hardware is installed. And uh, yeah, we're just going to click next. So, and next we can configure some basics. Um, for example, the Lambda display, I prefer to use AFR, but you also can use Lambda. Depends on what you prefer, but uh, I prefer the AFR value. Temperatures, we're gonna use Celsius. Pressure display, um, the scaling on the tables is still gonna be in KPA or kilopascal, but uh, the, for example, in the logs, the boost pressure will be in this value and we're gonna use bar. Enable hardware test, I was al would always recommend enabling this because um, then you can test injectors or coils or spark plugs, whatever, and everything else is pretty much set automatically and you don't have to worry about it. Okay, this is going to be just testing the port because we did automatic detection, we had don't have to worry about this. We're just gonna click next. Here you can, um, change the display of your tuner studio. Uh, I don't really like the other ones. I just use this most of the time, the stock one. Finish and then it's just gonna load into the UI. As you can see, we have some gauges here that either you may need or you may not need. I'm gonna show you how to change them real quick. Um, I'm just gonna explain a few of them. Obviously we have engine speed, throttle position, so the percentage of how much you have your gas pedal depressed. Pulse width is the open time, how long the injectors are open per cycle. Then we have the due to cycle, how many percent the injectors are used. Engine map, so this is the pressure in your intake manifold. 100 kPa is at atmospherical, so one bar basically. Air inlet temp, this is your um, inlet air temperature sensor if you have hooked up one. 
coolant temp, obviously coolant temp sensor, gamma enrichment. This is something that is, I'm going to explain later. It is basically something that is going on top of your normal fuel table, for example, on cold starts and or um, when cranking or something, then this value will be higher on normal driving when the engine is warm. This should be at 100%. So how to change those gauges, for example, if you don't, we don't need some of them and we need some other gauges, for example, when we want an AFR gauge, we go to sensor inputs and AFR gauge, then we have our AFR gauge here, obviously I don't have an AFR gauge hooked up, so this is going to show you an arbitrary value and um, I'm going to show you how to configure those sensor sensors shortly. And we don't need duty cycle, then we are going to just use uh, battery voltage, for example, because we are going to do lots of cranking and um, then you want to monitor your battery voltage if it gets too low and you might want to connect a charger. And uh, yeah, that's basically it for now. How to configure your sensors? That's probably the next important step you have to do is first of all calibrate TPS. So your throttle position sensor needs to be calibrated so that the engine will start and run correctly. We click on this and this is basically the first thing is the value on um, when the accelerator is not depressed. So when you are off throttle um, to calibrate it you just go off the gas pedal and then get current and full throttle AC, uh, ADC current is basically when you are full throttle then again you press depress your gas pedal fully obviously when your engine is off and then you can click on get current if you click on accept this will calibrate your throttle position and to check if it is correct just go off of your gas pedal and check if it is on zero and if you go on full throttle if it is on a hundred you can obviously check if it is going smoothly between every number or every percentage and if it is that's perfect calibrating pressure sensors is also pretty easy because most of the work is already pre-done uh, the map sensor which is the sensor that reads your manifold pressure or the pressure in the engine um, is most of the time pre-configured and especially when you are buying a ECU with a map on it that is plug and play for your car. Uh, if it is not reading the correct value here, for example, if you're reading 130, 140 or whatever, then the, that might be the wrong sensor. You can, in most cases, look into the manual of your ECU and then the sensor will be listed there. Most of the sensors should be in here, but there will also be values that you can put in here what kpl value the sensor should read at zero and five volts because any sensor is reading somewhere between zero and five volts barrel sensor is the barometric barometrical sensor so it reads basically the pressure of your outside air so if you are for example changing altitude if you go up a mountain that air pressure will drop and this sensor will compensate your fuel fueling for this um, this is relatively important that it is correct not every ECU does have the sensor but this for example has it and that is also pre-configured and this is basically the same thing as the above sensor just with a lower pressure limit this is just until 121 kPa um, obviously because air pressure does not really go over a hundred much because a hundred would be sea level. EMAP sensor is an external map sensor so if you are using a map sensor that reads for example before intercooler and you are reading map after intercooler so you can measure the pressure drop before and after the intercooler or if you want to for some reason measure some other pressure then you can use this sensor and this is just again the same thing this is just a, an additional sensor for pressure you can select the same one but obviously this has to be wired into the plug and you have to select which plug or which exact pin you used and um, yeah then basically click on burn to select set those changes and close
Next thing you should do is calibrate your temperature sensors as the voltage reading isn't really that important. That should match what is uh, on here, the battery voltage. So that's, you can ignore that. The temperature sensors are pretty important depending on if you use a plug and play unit or not. If or if you are using a ready-made base map or not, you can configure your coolant temperature and air temperature sensors. And this is just similar to the air pressure sensors, although you have to get those also right. And there are also just some sensors in here, for example, for Mazda, Toyota or GM, which are used very often, especially in the Miata world for IAT, the GM sensor is preferred sensor to use. If it is not listed here, then you can also put in temperature and resistance values because this is not a zero to five volt sensor that gives out a voltage, but it is a sensor that has an internal resistance and that is just listed most of the time on the manufacturer's website. Um, and you have to put in the values here and then you can click right on controller and then you should be able to read the correct temperatures. Most of the time you can judge if it is correct by the IAT temperature if that is close to the temperature that is in your environment right now, if the engine is cold, obviously. Then you have the AFR sensor, which is basically your Lambda or O2 sensor and that gauge right here. Most of the time you're gonna have an external controller. So for example, an AEM gauge, Innovate gauge that has a O2 sensor with it and there's one wire that's going out of the sensor that you have to wire in into the ECU. And there is a specific pin for that and if you have wired into the correct pin, you will be able to select a wideband gauge here. Most popular is the AM linear, either the 304200 or the 304900, although this is the most popular I think and I have used this most of the time it works pretty reliably. There are also some generic wideband gauges that use a linear signal so you just go to linear custom wideband and then this is the same as the pressure sensors. You have a diagram on the manufacturer's website for the wideband that tells you um, which voltage is going to show you which AFR value. Most of the time it's 0 to 5 volts and 10 to 20 AFR. So that's basically part one for configuring the sensors. I don't want to go too long in those videos because that can get quite confusing and I want to go step by step. In the next part we are going to show you the basic settings that you have to do to get your base map running or to get your base map properly configured for your vehicle. Um, yeah, see you then and until next time. Bye!